Welcome back to Casual Bias Rugby. It's always one of those discussions when we talk about rugby. Who is currently the best rugby player in the world? We see it in football where it's Messi versus Ronaldo. We see it in tennis where it's Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, of, of who's the greatest of all time. But let's talk about rugby currently, right? On form, who's the best players in the world? And I've identified five players, right? And I'm not basing this off, off history, what they've done over the years, what they've contributed. Just currently now, who's the best and who's the most on-form players in the world? Who's the most talented boys in the world? Um, and I've narrowed it down to five. And I think it's a great discussion to have. Obviously, um, we've seen a lot of people a couple of months ago, maybe even a couple of weeks ago, I can't even remember, um, saying that it's Antoine Dupont, right? And it's a valid shout. But I just thought, let's do it justice and, and mention some other boys. Because Adi Savar is always in the discussion. Eben Etzebed is always in the discussion. Stuff like that. So let's look at and identify five players it's an open discussion. You can disagree if you like to in the, in the comments. I expect you to. I've gone a bit wild with it. Um, and I want to hear what's your top five and rank them because I've ranked it as well from five to one. Um, so please do remember to like and subscribe. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. You know, if you watch this channel, you, you'll find literally perspectives from all over the world because I just bring on a lot of people. A lot of people run their own podcast through this channel. So please do remember to like, like and subscribe. It does help the channel out a lot and I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. But let's get into it, right? In that number five slot, in that number five slot, right? And obviously I'm not going off any stats or anything, you know, I just talk off the cuff, you know, it's one of those things. In that number five jersey, currently I've got, uh, it's going to be a wild one. I'm starting off wild. I'm going Cody Taylor. I mean, just look at the damage that he's done in, in, in the past past couple of weeks, past couple of months. He's been absolutely sensational. Like, the fact that we always talk about Dan Sheehan and Malcolm Marx rightfully being, like, kind of the best hookers of this generation. And they kind of feel like they, they're miles ahead of everyone else. Cody T Taylor, in recent months, has been nothing short of absolutely sensational. I, uh, just look at last weekend, right? When, when Or even two weekends in a row. I mean, the way that he took on the Springboks defense... With his carries, his defensive work rate, he was pretty secure at, at line-out. He scored the tries, um, obviously vice-captain as well. He was absolutely brilliant. And when, when you have the threat of, uh, was it Asafo Amua, that came through at an absolutely brilliant Super Rugby season, and you are Cody Taylor, the experienced man, uh, you know you're fighting for that jersey, because ov obviously Samasoni Takiyahu still needs to come back. And you demolish, demolish Amua, to that extent that he doesn't even come onto the field until very late, that just tells you how good you've been playing, right? Like, he's been absolutely sensational, right? Like, I mean, absolutely brilliant. He's just showed his class once again. He's never really been in the discussion as one of the world's best, um, not even one of the world's best hookers. He's always been up there, but he's never really been in the discussion with Malcolm Marks and, and uh, Dan Sheehan, and yet I'm putting him in that fifth position for who's the best rugby player in the world at the moment. Like, I know it's recency bias. That's the whole point of this video, right? Like, we can only judge it on what we've seen recently. Um, he's been so good. He's been so good, and I want to give him his flowers. So I've got Cody Taylor in that five position. Moving on, in that four jersey. I know I just mentioned Adi Savaya, right? But there's been another standout number eight, and you can't look past him. Like, obviously, he hasn't played now in a while. He hasn't played since the tours. I've got Kalen Doris putting some respect on the Irish boys. Um, what an absolute oh, brute of a man. Like, he's so good. He was, he was my man of the tour when, when the Irish toured here. He's been nothing short of sensational for so long. He's had a great club season as well for, for Leinster. Obviously, they didn't take the trophies, but it doesn't take away from, from his performances. He steps up into that Irish jersey. I think he was, was he the captain as well? Um, could be, I'm not too sure. Uh, no, Peter Omani was, and then was he the second game? Was he captain in the second game? I'm not even sure. But I mean, just the way that he plays the game at the moment, going up against like the world's best, always, always puts in a performance, always a standout performer. It kind of reminds me the way that Adi Savaya just stood out in, in the struggling All Black side, what was it, like two years ago. This is not even a struggling Irish side, but yet Kalen Doris just shines above everyone. Like he is so, so good. And I wouldn't even say he's underrated, right? Everyone rates him. But he is levels and levels above every number eight in the world at the moment. Like, spoiler alert, I didn't even have Surveyor yet. K 
Kalen Doris has been sensational. Kalen Doris deserves to get his to get his love, to get his flowers. So I'm going Kalen Doris to um, to take my number four position. Number three, and a lot of people could probably argue him to be top two, maybe even first place. I've got Peter Steff do tackle. Right, this guy. How many man of the match performances in a row? Like four in a row. I think he's missed like one or two games that he's not got a man of the match. I mean, I kind of, as I'm saying this, I don't even understand why I've not got him number one. Like, the guy has been sensational. Since the World Cup, we know the tackles that he's put in. He put in 20-plus 20, 20 tackles on both Irish games. I mean, the guy is on ridiculous form. He plays multiple positions. We've got a lock threat. Right, we've got six lock replacement, uh, six lock injuries. Yet Peter Steff, uh, the toy slots in there and acts like he's been there all his life. Right, Peter Steff, uh, the toy, absolutely sensational. Probably he's got to be on on route to to win uh, World Player of the Year currently. Like him and and the other two that I've got above him, surely, surely they are the standout ones. Right, like I feel like the three of them have been nothing short of. Absolutely sensational. So Peter Steff Dutoy goes into into my third position. Number two, uh, people will say he's number one. I'm not going to really argue it. I've, uh, there's positives and uh, and negatives of of everyone. Like obviously you can't count Peter Steff Dutoy's franchise career really because he, he plays in Japan, right? So um, where the guy that I'm about to mention, Antoine Dupont, almost only plays for franchise at the moment because. He's got no minutes outside the Northern Hemisphere. I think about what, like 30 minutes? That is ridiculous. Um, but I'm not going to put any disrespect on his, on his name. I mean, what he did when he came into, into the French 7 squad, winning them their first medal in how long? Might have been their first ever. Winning them the gold at the Olympics as well. Even though, in my opinion, he wasn't really the standout 7s player, you can't deny the impact that he had on that team. You saw what he did at, at franchise level. He did the double four in the top 14, which is arguably probably the hardest league to win at the moment. Um, he played with a broken face in the Rugby World Cup. Uh, the guy, the talent that he has, I mean, he's a nine and he gets all these breakdown penalties. He steals the ball. He doesn't miss a tackle. He's He's got very deceiving pace. Like, he's pretty quick. He kicks off both feet. Uh, just puts it wherever he wants. He just controls the game like an absolute maestro. And he's by far, by far the best nine in the world currently. Like, I, I've been supportive of, of Aaron Smith being the best nine to ever play this game. I'm not going to go back on my word. Um, but since Aaron Smith is gone, Dupont's just taken over and there's, there's no real competition for it. I've always said that I think Aaron Smith is a better nine than, than Antoine Dupont, but I think Antoine Dupont is a better player um, than Aaron Smith. He just offers you more around the field. Um, but talent-wise, this guy is seriously, seriously, almost unmatched. There's only one guy that matches up, and I'm about to speak to you about it. And you probably already know um, who I'm talking about. But Antoine Dupont, I'm going to give him his flowers as well. I know there's a lot of people that talk shit on the guy. I'm not going to do that. I just know I, I can't put the best player in the world at number one if he doesn't even play outside the Northern Hemisphere. Like, you've got to go and achieve team accomplishments outside of your home country or outside of the Northern Hemisphere. And he hasn't even done it on neutral grounds, right? So that is the only kind of bad thing with with Dupont, just like I mentioned with Peter Steff to tackle. Sorry, let me close my window. Just as I mentioned with uh, Peter Steff to tackle playing in, in Japan, like it's not really that they can help it. We know how the top 14 uh, works with their administration and that they don't want to play their boys um, or have them tour necessarily. But it is what it is, right? Like, I can only judge on, on what's given to me. And in that number one jersey, uh, in that number one spot, you already know I'm, who, I, who I'm talking about. I mean, it's the little maestro, Cheslin Colby. I, I, I'm pretty sure this guy has to be the most talented player on, on the rugby field that, that we've ever seen, right? Like... The reason, the main reason that there's two reasons that I've got him above Dupont, right? I, I think he offers just as much in terms of talent-wise, right? But he's played literally, <coughs> excuse me, so many games outside of South Africa. Obviously, he also plays in Japan. It's the same as Peter Steff to toy. But when he played franchise level, he's won it all, right? I just don't. He was he, he wasn't successful at the Stormers, but when he went abroad, he's won it in France, right, and he's won it with, with two teams there as well, so he kind of 
equals to Ponte in, in that accomplishment. But it, it, it's like he does everything and he's got these amazing impacts, but he plays on the wing. Like Dupont touches the ball literally every single phase and can do something every phase. Cheslin Colby gets the ball this much and he does all this damage. I mean, he does all this work rate, right? And sometimes you might think it's even worthless work rate and then it pays off. World Cup against France, chase down kick, we win the game by one point. Cheslin Colby, euro for that. We play against Ireland in this recent tours, right? Cheslin Colby chases a ball that's kicked to touch. The ball's kept in. Cheslin Colby picks it up and goes and scores. We win that game by a couple of points, right? That's Cheslin Colby putting on the pressure. The guy doesn't miss tackles. He bounces guys about three, four, five times bigger than him. It's ridiculous. He's got insane pace. He's got a great step. He kicks it. Like, he kicks to goal. He kicks to touch. He's got a mammoth boot for the size of him. He's a menace at the breakdown as well. I mean, just like the talent that he has, and obviously he's accomplished everything in sevens as well, except for um, a rug, uh, Olympic medal, right? Like, all around, how, how much more talented can you be than what Cheslin Colby brings? I mean, he won us the World Cup in 2019 as well, with well, secured it with, with his try. I mean, just, I don't want to go back too far, because I said currently, and I know this might be very recently biased after of his performance last weekend, but I think he's on the form of his life. He is so, 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 so good. And the thing that puts him above DuPont, as I just mentioned, is he's done it everywhere. He's won it all. He's done it. He's played 38 or 39 games, got two World Cups, a British and Irish Lions tour, and he's about to get a rugby championship if things go to plan. His second rugby championship. That is, like, what are we even talking about? And then we talk about, like, DuPont, uh, Cheslin Colby being one of the world's greatest wingers, if not the greatest winger of all time. I don't agree with that. Obviously, you need a lot more caps, right? But the fact that he's in the conversation and he's played 38 games, do we not hear how absolutely mad that sounds? That is why Chesson Colby, in my opinion, is the best player in the world currently, just with everything that he offers. Ridiculous. From the wing. Got to be one of the most creative players in the world as well. Ridiculous. But as I said, you can disagree with me. I am expecting a lot of people to say Dupont should have been one. I'm expecting a lot of people to even say Peter Steph Tutoy should have been one. Just thought it was an interesting discussion. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and give me your top five ranked, right? I would love to start a discussion with that. I'll, I'll come back to as much of you as, as humanly possible um, in the comment section give you my thoughts on, on your top five. I think it's an interesting discussion. I, I know for sure I've messed out a couple of people because I just came to sit down, said, who's the top five that pops in my head and spewed it out, right? But I'm sure I've missed a couple of people. It is what it is. Um, as I said, it's, it's off the cuff. We're just chatting. Um, anyway, hope you enjoy your day and I will see you next time. Thank you. One, two,